lunch will be in room C, which is out here and to the left and to the left. So it's in this room. So lunch will be in room C, which is just to your left. So I'd like to uh, introduce to the stage again uh, Peter Mugiet. Um, Peter's now going to give a, a presentation on the opportunities for digital um, in the analog printing space, the industrial printing. Thank you very much. So, um, actually, this is uh, perfectly uh, an add on to the previous presentation. I'm not going to talk about the fight between digital and analog. Actually, I saw already in, in, in the last seven years that screen has made a path for digital uh, and opened uh, some possibilities and you will see that uh, um, digital has become more competitive, uh, has become to an industrial level with uh, speed and, and bringing costs down and the reliability and all these things I will uh, cover during this presentation. I also will skip a number of things which have been uh, presented already. So uh, here again, uh, the overview. So I think it's important, like we tried to do it earlier with the panel, uh, what's industrial print, who is sitting in which uh, field. Uh, so I will not talk about the wide variety of industrial, but a little bit more on, like, we try to define within ESMA what is industrial print. Uh, many definitions have been given in the past. The strong points, very briefly, of analog, because before we talked enough about analog, but then even the stronger points of digital, uh, going disruptive, and I will try to explain what I mean with that, both for digital and screen, and where fits who with their technology, and then uh, where is the market going? Uh, this is also typically a question of uh, what was raised, where can we find the biggest expectations and uh, the possibilities? Um, I will skip six and hopefully we come quickly to conclusions that nobody gets to hunger uh, during this presentation physically, I mean. But hopefully hunger for industrial print. Let's kick off. So what is industrial print? And actually, <laughs> if, I, if I, with the pictures already, you can see uh, there, there is a, definitely a change in, in print when we see how the early presses were and now where it's going. But uh, many definitions were given and, and they talked about volume, they talked about fitting certain markets, markets were excluded or included, uh, combination about multiple uh, print technologies were forgotten, uh, how does it fit to suppliers, printers, print service providers, specifiers, and all these kind of things. So, we gave it some thought, and actually we came up with an ESMA definition for, uh, and we said, and, you can, and I also highlighted a little bit, um, in, what is for us industrial printing? Not a discrete market, but a group of markets, where printing is used often as a part of manufacturing process or as a functional part of the end product and it's not usually the main function of the product or is a uh, speciality within a market. It, it sounds very complex but all it want to say is that very often it is what I mentioned before, it's only part of a, a complete product. You print like a, membranes, which you print uh, a circuit, you print uh, a facial for a washing machine uh, indication or something. And that's one step to go towards industrial printing. Um, when we look a little bit deeper in, uh, in this um, industrial printing, when I talk about print as a product, it's typically the products you will know, like uh, post pop, large format posters, banners, flags, floor graphics, the usual stuff. 
when it's printed, laminated, whatever, it becomes an end point. It's ready for use. Yeah. This is the opposite of print as a process. Print as a process, as I mentioned before, we look to do with printing a part of a manufacturing step. Eh? To, to, to make a part for a car or for a toy or whatever. Um, and, and this adds more like a soft part. And many of these soft parts become a product. Just like I, I showed in print electronics with a smartphone. Not all the parts are printed, some parts are printed. Um, sometimes it's also hard where do we include textile, where do we include packaging, labeling? Because there, very often, like labels, we print them and they're ready. But I, I just had a talk and um, we, we hear more and more that they add more and more to labels also and, and it becomes not just a printed label. Now, um, I mentioned also before, we have to step away from the pure graphical mode today of uh, digital printing and even for screen printing. So, I, I show you here a number of, of, of things. Some I have highlighted already from switches, bottles, uh, safety helmets, terraforming. Uh, this is something like a mold decoration or film de mold. It's becoming more and more also important for digital especially for the very small series because there again it's not viable for the screen printing. Um, of course this is a, only a selective overview. Um, going further into um, looking to the points of analog versus digital, I didn't want to talk about the weak stuff but about the strong points. And the strong points for um, screen were mentioned already before, but now I want to stress very often screen provides very mature things and it can withstand um, like uh, different chemicals. Uh, it can uh, be very scratch resistant without extra protection. You can say, yes, but it's also possible if you have digital prints, you do a coating, a lamination. Yes, but sometimes it's not possible or not allowed. Yeah? Like if, if you work in the food packaging or so, uh, on, on the plastic containers, for example, they don't allow to do uh, you extra layers on top of the direct print, for example. And it's also a cost issue and so on and so on. So um, keep in mind the durability of the prints. And then what I mentioned before, the material deposition. But there are other analog, very briefly on it, uh, offset and flexo and gravure. Most of these have some chances to do other material deposition, but it's hard because of the, uh, the biology of the inks, the viscosity plays very often uh, is a bottleneck to do much more than uh, traditional uh, packaging printing or uh, commercial printing. Gravure has taken a big uh, market in the uh, world of uh, flooring and for laminated floors and so on. But uh, there again, big competition will come from digital. And we will see why. Um, now, moving quickly over to the more uh, hot topic of this conference also. Strong points of, of digital. There we can see, of course, that um, it took, um, let's say, uh, at least two decades to bring digital to where we are today. From uh, multi-pass, very slowly in the beginning, to now single-pass, high speeds. Uh, but you can say, yeah, increasing the speed is only one thing, yeah, but it's everything around. And, during other presentations of my colleagues here, they will uh, pinpoint what's required from software, from data flows, from all these things. The faster you go, the more you have to do to keep it uh, within uh, a good uh, printing uh, solution. 
So what, what can we say? It, it is definitely now becoming competitive in speed, especially in, in textile, we see it. Uh, and um, what has been the strongest point is there is no setup cost for uh, for, uh, for digital printing, and that means that every other millimeter, let's say, they do, they can do something different, or every meter, they can have a completely different uh, design, and this is, this might be one of the overcoming uh, issues in the textile production in the future. And also, you can play with these options. I saw in a, in another, um, project from textile where every design um, which was printed for a dress was a little bit different and again they developed like for Audi an app but an app if you uh, would take um, a picture of the dress they would connect her specifically with one dress which was made at one specific point sold at one specific place she would be then connected as the owner of that address. Again, this is important for building these uh, databases. Know where your customers are. Uh, know what type of customers you have just by uh, little variations in the printed design. Um, and of course, an app which was developed. Of course, digital provides now with the high speeds from long to short runs. And again, this flexibility. Uh, if I compare it with the screen, um, definitely in screen printing, and again, I, I look to the textile environment, we used to talk about color kitchens. They had to mix the right colors to use as less screens as possible. I think Steve will talk a little bit about color management. The color kitchen was very expensive, time consuming in times of screen. It's all gone now. A good software you can control the perfect colors in an easy way um, and, and it brings this huge advantage less uh, less time and uh, no no waste of uh, mixing colors physically then. Um, also it can be adaptive to uh, in colors to certain spot colors it's not that uh, it's it is a must to only print with um, the traditional CMYK colors and additional colors. Um, one of the points I see for the near future is a non-contact printing. Non-contact printing, I'll show you an example. Non-contact printing is the biggest advantage of uh, digital because you will see it can, com be, can be combined with fragile materials can be combined with 3D layers and so on. Um, and of course, as I mentioned before, today, uh, serialization, personalization, names on bottles, on Nutella, uh, choco pots with names, it's all very important to uh, make new campaigns by big brands and the uh, flexibility of this is very important for the future. Um, This is a, a traditional example of a, a video of, of cardboard printing and it, uh, it took a while but now you can see that actually every second another print of, uh, and another sheet can roll out actually out of the machine and this gives again many opportunities and the quality and the speed is there to compete with uh, other uh, traditional methods which were used for the packaging industry, uh, and it brings uh, again this uh, possibility for replacement markets. This is another video, um, it's more from the printed electronics world where digital took a very important space, uh, place. And that's now an example I wanted to show you about the non-contact printing. This is uh, something very special. The people are lifting actually a roll of glass. It's almost incredible to believe that this is a roll of 50 micron glass. Uh, this is not a thinnest glass. Now you have ultra 
thin glass called gro Gorilla Glass, for example. It's, it's almost behaving like paper. Of course, a little bit more difficult as normal paper. And what they're going to do is they're going to print uh, conductive tracks and bus, bus bars, actually, for collecting, um, uh, connecting devices that will be mounted on the glass. It could be even for a bent solar panel uh, that will be made from that very thin layer of glass. It looks like plastic, but it's real glass. And here you see how it all is handled with enormous care. And here you see the digital printing hat using a silver paste for, I think it's even a, a, a copper paste adapted uh, for uh, inkjet printing. And then again, the curing with laser, also non contact uh, and they don't change too much the environment with the fast laser because if, it, if this glass would go into an oven of 200, 300 degrees, I don't think it would withstand uh, uh, too, too much time in, uh, at that temperature. So, again, it shows that digital can find its place, where, as I mentioned before, where it stops with all the other traditional analog printing. So, that's bringing me to this topic of, of going disruptive with, with digital and a little bit with screen. Um, going disruptive, for me, going disruptive is, is going, going away from this traditional printing. The, definitely not the replacement market. Yeah? As I showed you before, replacement market is there to bring some, some extra advantages, but it's not bringing a whole new world to the printing industry. But like disruptive, there are some little things that I found recently. Uh, maybe that is good visible, but this is an IKEA table, and they have printed underneath the uh, lacquer a, a small track, uh, actually a near field uh, antenna, and it's, it's a loader for a smartphone. So, it's a very simple uh, thing, but uh, making your uh, coffee table as a, as a loading platform for a smartphone. And this coming from a, a company that you wouldn't see as the most uh, advanced printing uh, technology user, but it is done with true printing. It could be even done with a, a label, actually put it onto a table. And then below you see uh, another um, device I saw from the textile. And this is a kind of handbag for uh, women and it contains a Bluetooth speaker and, a, and also a battery of course. And it can be used either as a, as a speaker that they can carry with them for uh, playing music from their smartphone or even in, in worst cases to, to, uh, as a battery backup for their smartphone. And these typically things combining textile with electronics and, and traditional electronics gives, gives this experience to, um, to the industry to combine printing and non-printing uh, parts. So that's, that's a little bit for the dis disruptive world. Now, here I show you another video. Uh, this is from a, a campaign in, uh, in Brazil from a, a sun uh, lotion for children actually and what they did is they, they tried to do again this cross-media solution and actually they had tried to solve also a one big, one major problem in Brazil uh, is that a lot of children disappear uh, when they run away from their parents they can't find them back uh, of course you can imagine what has happened um, so, you see she tears out a kind of strap and on that strap it's printed but also they have uh, put like a, a GPS uh, tag on it. She loads a certain application again, she has to give all her details, she's the mother of this child and, and this and that. She enters also a code which was on the tube, uh, the sun lotion she bought, 
so they can combine again information from the sun motion where they bought it, when they bought it uh, a little bit with the, the parent and th then she has an app that can track her child with the band how far it's away and can uh, do the necessary following of the kid, the children and even track uh, back to uh, where the child is. It's a, it's a very simple thing but it's again using marketing, commercial marketing, commercial print uh, like a magazine in combination with a little bit of print electronics uh, different uh, prints. Of course, this is, as you can see, very labor intensive, so it's not something you can do everywhere. Um, but I think when we move more and more to these things, uh, as I mentioned more, the sensors are important. This is another way of, uh, let's say, a sensor. It's going to bring a new world uh, of connecting on and offline. And also, uh, a thing that I can explain is that. More and more of these things uh, you hear about the Internet of Things, so connecting devices, connecting for a moment um, a device to the Internet to provide information is becoming more and more important. So that's a little bit on, on this disruptiveness of uh, possibility. So now I, I want to see where is, is it all going with uh, these markets. Uh, it's a little bit uh, an extension of the previous uh, presentation and you can recognize the, the slide. But definitely here I want to point out that for, for, for digital, as I mentioned already, this, this whole interior decoration market is, is enormously important. Uh, large format flatback printing, for example, or uh, roll to roll printing uh, has made good efforts and can be used for digitally printed wallpaper, for flooring, uh, for um, panels for building, decorations for kitchens, for walls, whatever, um, in a low uh, quantity level. But it's, we also see that industrial machines are built for flooring like Himmel uh, builds high level machines just for printing panels. Uh, for floors, so you will see the, the two opportunities, either the replacement of graphics used as signage, now graphics as a solution for interiors, and the other way, uh, using digital technology for industrial equipment. But also the move of digital into glass, I mentioned already, is, is another way of decorating. Uh, which is again becoming more and more important because uh, more and more these solutions are used indoor and that is easy to use the digital technology. The, the most important part is actually the jump that InJet is going to make. And it's, it's, it's grown almost 30 times in, in, in five years. Indicated uh, so it, it shows that the majority of new things will be based on inject technology to, to push areas of expertise like the packaging, like what was happening already in the ceramics, probably still pushing in the glass area uh, the possibilities of using digital technology. To give you an idea on, on On, the, uh, on this table, I want to point out, and I mentioned it already, the decoration market, the ceramics, the glass, but plastic, for example, is still a market, it's not indicated, it's, it's fitting a little bit in different areas. The plastic market is uh, like uh, thermoforming, uh, is, is a very important market for digital also, because there again, we can see individualization uh, for toys and uh, stretch boundaries with uh, thermoforming. Um, again, repetition of the last time. Uh, Inchat growth of 30 times. 
um, in, in millions from 1.1 and we have to see that it's definitely not only in textile and in glass, it's in these many different important areas where we will see movements. Uh, upcoming solutions to do uh, smaller runs, uh, special runs into areas where we have not only mass production. And this will give much more possibilities for internet also to be much more lucrative than before. It's not going to be like in the signage market to, to fight for every euro um, on, on the price. No, in uh, personalized markets, you play with a smaller scale of uh, individuals and uh, prices is definitely not the only issue uh, to overcome. So, I can skip this part because I have explained it already. Conclusions. A um, little bit stolen from Steve uh, as an introduction to the uh, InJet conference. As you hear already, there has been done a lot of adoption for the InJet actually, in, uh, and it was done through a number of steps because it's not like you go from one technology to another. I have seen it also in the uh, printed electronics, even to go from silver printing to copper printing. Um, especially in the industrial level uh, and large industrial um, factories, they must see proven results before they make changes. So, development of the core technology and the print heads, the units, uh, the equipment, then, as I mentioned, proof of the application is very important. Then a marketing introduction, and definitely it's important to see that markets need to be widened, deepened by the possibility of digital. Going replacement is not the only way. Go rather disruptive. And then finding the right market. Adoption, time and place. Um, we, I see the second part is, is more that Unjet um, has been in certain markets for uh, two or three generations. And naturally, the, the understanding of possibilities of Unjet has been seen, and now they can go a step further with a single pass, uh, adding more volume and more possibilities to the printing. So um, it becomes important that they also see other markets. And I think definitely like what we have seen in the Caribbean world. Now a lot of experience from the Caribbean mar market in tile printing, it, I think, is um, transferred to new opportunities in similar environments with Caribbean. And, and also I saw a lot of these people moving to even printed electronics and conductive track printing because they have built up certain experiences. So that's actually going to wrap up my, my approach to the digital side. So you can see that digital is going where screen or technologies have not gone before. They have helped to overcome non the non-contact solutions. They have much more possibilities with these personalizations, the flexibility, and this can help you to open a new world of paper. So, I think I did it in a quite quick and swift way. So, uh, this is still uh, very, very briefly what I mentioned for the screen, and that's the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, very much indeed, Peter. That was another fascinating presentation. I think that we can start to see now where from digital and screen printing working together, where there are unique opportunities also for digital printing. So I'd like to turn to our, our panel members again and ask first of all Mark for any comments or questions you'd like to hear. 
I have um, a few comments I'd like to make, uh, building on your presentation there, Peter. You know, one thing that's interesting is that uh, through that presentation, Peter, you're interchanging digital versus screen. And of course, digital, in the context we're talking about here, uh, is pretty much all inkjet. All inkjet. Okay? But people need to just remember that. The second thing is, that, of course, that uh, not all inkjet is created equal. What do I mean by that? I mean that, uh, in my humble opinion, it is my humble opinion, piezo, drop-on-demand inkjet, is the most versatile inkjet technology that there is. Okay? And the reason I, I talk about that is because to ad adopt it into manufacturing processes, it's about the range of fluids that you can inject, okay? And having a, having a technology that is very versatile, of course, is what's making inkjet very appealing to so many different industries. I know Paddy would agree because we have, a, we have the same core technology. Um, it is the most versatile. But the other point I wanted to make was, which is a bit broader, is that there are lots of different inkjet technologies and printheads available in the marketplace that actually allow you to do lots of different things. And for all of the industrial processes we're talking about today, actually not one single printhead will do all of that. So it's important to understand uh, you know, the characteristics of printheads and the inkjet technology uh, for your specific process. I could talk about it some more, uh, but you know, maybe I should hand on to, uh, to one of the other guys to, uh, to talk about that. Addy, do you want to pick that up or give you one small? Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's completely right. Uh, and I remember from my past experience when I was selling printers, always I had this request from the perfect printer that could do everything. And I said, no, I'm never going to sell you the perfect printer that does everything because then there will be no next printer. So then, uh, and printers change on, on fluids, on possibilities, on resolution. resolution. Either they are roll to roll or flat. But, and I, I always will have a big belief that first time park river print environment is going to help to overcome a number of issues. You cannot use a glass printer for only for glass and not for not even for ceramics, and you cannot use a glass printer for electronics and so on. So you, you need to see that uh, definitely the different heads, the different equipment is, is, is still going to bring a lot of variety in a print part of this world. I agree with um, Mark's point as well. I've, I've been asked what is the best printer, and it's like being asked what is your favourite child, which one is your best child. Yeah. My son is good at school, my daughter is good at math. It's different. Everyone has its own different chance. Clients have slightly different questions. This is, I mean, Mark's obviously pushed the inkjet case to mind is the, the dominant one. So, I have a slightly controversial question, probably especially for someone myself to ask. Do you believe that other digital technologies are going to make more inroads? And are there any upcoming technologies that may? Say, um, valve technology or, or, or the, the yeah. Um, from my experience, I, I see that journal based digital ones they're typically good as a solution for these commercial print uh, packaging and flyers and all that, but then I don't see that they will run too much into this area where we are talking about it. But on the other hand, a technology that I have been experiencing in my conductive project is the aerosol generator, which is a, a little bit of a mixture between continuous inkjet. Uh, it, it's not a piezo uh, printer, so it, it's, you have a, a salt part and, and you have a gas, they mix it, they send it through a head, and it has a not a nozzle, but it has a, it, like even an air channel, and they uh, have a, a kind of valve to print or not to print. And uh, if it's not printed, it's stuck away and really 
use, so they have not so much waste like the old technology in containers. And then I have seen as a good solution for productive quality. But it's, I, I also see that it's, it's probably also good for special materials. But probably also complementary to the case of It's, it's all very interesting. <coughs> I'll come back to um, a slightly off topic to start with. Um, we all know that business is, is challenging. And we see with globalization uh, in particular, the only way to compete seems to be to produce your products cheaper and to lower cost until your neighbor lowers his cost. Um, and this is where inkjet comes in as a disruptive print technology that changes the whole economics of manufacturing. It changes it whether you're in ceramics or textiles or packaging. Uh, every area of business seems to have some element of print. And here we've got a very disruptive technology that changes the way we do business. It gives us opportunity to change the way we do business. Um, we're no longer trying to get the lowest unit cost. With digital production, we're trying to get the most economical solution, the highest margin, the most profitable solution. Now, Inkjet has been around for more than 20 years, but in terms of industrial production, we're, we're able to do high speed, high resolution, single pass printing. We have a technology that's five to seven years old maybe eight years old. And it's improved in different industries, in different methods, and there's still a lot of uh, adoption that will happen over the next 10 years. Uh, and the question to Peter is, how would you advise somebody, when is the right time to take that jump, to turn the business into a digital business, with digital manufacturing, with digital applications, Moving from an analog to trying to cut costs. It's a tough question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you have to look to, to, to different parameters before you can start to make a switch. Um, first of all, it depends if, you, if it's a standalone solution. Yeah? If it's a standalone solution, it depends when are your customers ready to, to accept that you make the switch. Then do they they accept only the switch when you provide the same board, or when you do something more than what you have done before. That's one reason. Uh, on the other hand, uh, sometimes we have seen already that it goes the other way, that they even in compromises. They say the quality was too good for what we were using, so we can level it out a little bit because price pressures, changes in the market, requirements of the market. But then I think it's also very important to look, um, and definitely Europe is a, a nasty example of it, regulations. What products can you use? What can't you use? Uh, also, uh, is it important to do smaller or flexible runs closer to a location? It is a network of they said, and, and all these things are, I think, for a lot of companies in the future, big, uh, big opportunities, but also big studies to find out that's the right solution. I think there is no, no perfect answer on you do it in a year or in two years. It depends how you're driven by customers or you, how you're driven by do you mind if I add some comments to that? So a slightly different, a slightly different angle. So I was thinking that uh, if you look at the, the product adoption life cycle, Steve, your question was when should a company adopt, uh, you know, and convert to digital. So I was thinking it depends. It depends on the application. It depends on the manufacturing process that you're working in. Inkjet. Uh, is, is generally now adopted uh, as a, a, an accepted as a technology that can be used as a manufacturing tool. 
but the specific application, okay, they're at all different levels of maturity. If we look at ceramic printing, as we mentioned several times, you know, more than 50% of the global production is now being done for decorated ceramic tiles with inkjet. On that basis, if you're not in, in and using inkjet, you're probably not going to be in business for much longer. Other technologies are much, much earlier in the adoption cycle. So it depends on your, your view of risk in terms of at what point you adopt the technology. Um, with, with these answers, if uh, there's thinking and listening to what they're saying, and I can summarise it, you need to make the move to digital before you run out of money, <laughs> rather than afterwards. Merhabalar, Şahin Acar ben. Ee, öncelikle teşekkür ediyorum güzel sorunuz için. Ee, ben e, sormak istediğim soru şu, serigrafi ile ilgili. Ee, Türkiye e, ve gelişmekte olan ülkeler, artı üçüncü dünya ülkelerinde serigrafi yöntemi hala e, kullanılmakta olan bir yöntem. Ee, Avrupa'da ya da gelişmiş sanayi devrimi tamamlamış, gelişmiş de, e, gördüğüm kadarıyla e, serigrafi bitti mi e, ya da bitmiş mi e, ve de e, bundan sonra bu, bu gelişmiş ülkelerde serigrafi nereye gelecektir? E, Türkiye gibi gelişmekte olan e, pazarlarda sonu ne olur sizce? Screen printing will stay 